Good afternoon, or good evening, rather, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, DDoS, with my good friend. Welcome back once again, Mr. Tex2517. I'll tell you what, folks. I was listening to, uh, believe it or not, the AHA song, Take On Me. And uh, it brought to mind a lot of the emails that I've gotten and the messages on Facebook asking me, how would you go about killing one of these dog men? Whether you just happen to run into one and you're in dire straits or whether it's to hunt one. I want to throw this disclaimer out. Neither Tex or myself are imploring nor advocating the hunting of any live animal or cryptid. This is just our opinion on our uh, based on our encounters and our research into the creature. Well, let's have some fun with it. Tex, how you doing, brother? Good, good, man. Um, you know, it's funny that this this years ago, I actually because uh, you know my first encounter was a dog man encounter. And, Sixteen uh, years old, right? Yeah, and uh, I guess I was in my thirties. Yeah, I guess I was in my thirties, and um, me and some friends were talking about it and stuff, and ex-military friends and cop friends and everything. And uh, what he came up with this bright idea: we was going to go hunt this thing down. And uh, we actually laid everything out. We had a, I mean, <laughs> we had everything. It was we had everything on paper, man. What we were taking, where we, the, uh, we went down all the way down to the formations we were going to take approaching, you know, the area and what would happen, what would happen in this scenario, how would, you know, what this person would do, this person would do. I mean, we laid it like, we laid it out like an op. Yeah. Game know? plan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, s several different types of weapons and they were of course all big bore, you know, and, and, uh, of course, it never came to fruition, uh, and I think that was probably the better, the best thing that could have happened. Yeah, and see, that's the thing about it. You know, a lot of people they say, "Well, D, you've seen what you've seen them, you've encountered them, blah blah blah." Uh, just tell us how to go about doing it. And I've never done it before. And for whatever reason, that song inspired me. And you know, <laughs> uh, my imagination ran wild. And what would I do if I was in there alone? What would I have with me if I was alone hunting one of these things? And I'm going to tell you right off the rip, people, it would take a trained Navy SEAL group uh, to even have a chance, not to kill one, but to have a chance. We're not talking about Sasquatch. Think about it. Now, a lot of you guys who listen to this show, who are on this channel, have had encounters. You're listening to people who are telling real encounters. You know what's real and what's not. Take it to Sasquatch itself. This thing is fast. It's intelligent. I mean, it's, I've heard it called the ninja of the woods, and you can't get any better than describing it as that. But there's something lurking around in there amongst them that, in my opinion, is far more predatory, uh, far more carnal. And honestly, I think it's a little bit more stealthy. Uh, everyone who sees an encounter with the Sasquatch, they're not taking into account that these things occupy the same space. Uh Swamp Dweller and myself used to describe it as the hippopotamus and the crocodile in Southern Africa. When the water's low, the hippo and the crocodile, they're going to occupy the same space, but they're both top tier predators. Yeah, they tolerate each other. They tolerate each other. And I believe that's the same thing that you get when you have these Sasquatch and these dog men. They are tolerating each other's presence because you got top two top tier predators in an area. They're not going to waste the vital energy that they need to hunt game fighting amongst themselves. So it's amazing footage. If you haven't seen it, look it up on Facebook or, or YouTube. I mean, these, yeah, cause there, there's a croc that screws up and, and goes after a baby hippo. Yeah. In, screws, in, yeah I've seen that in, in that scenario. Screws and, up is the uh, right word to put it. Uh, white way yeah. to put it. And the hippos jump on that thing right quick and in a hurry. But yeah, because they're swimming on top of each other. I mean, the, yeah. the water's low, you know, that means, Game is going to be scarce as is. So take that and apply it to the Sasquatch and Dogmen. They're occupying the smallest, densest part of old growth forest there is. Um, they're tolerating each other's presence. In some cases, I've heard, I've not seen for myself, that they, uh, they help one another. But they are going to look out for each other as being the top tier predators, aside from us, because we're at the tippy top. 
we have brains that can invent weapons that can mow down the entire forest. So you go in there, you're by yourself. You have to think, what am I going to take with me? And it, uh, your grandpa's 22 that's handed down through the family ain't going to get the job done. Uh, no. You've heard a lot of these stories where they have these thick hides. I believe that's so. Um, I've heard too many honest people say that I've shot it from 60, 70 yards away with a 30 out six or 30, 30. I believe that I, I've heard too many ex military and just straight up honest people tell me that, that they've shot this thing center mass. It fell and it got back up and ran into the woods. Um, take it to the Miller document. If the Miller documents is going to be believed, then these things have a crazy Wolverine type healing element to them. I mean, yep. that goes, that goes in a little bit of the science fiction, but we don't know. Uh, we don't have a body to study. Uh, we damn sure don't have a live specimen, nor do, are we going to get one anytime soon? No, no civilian. Um, no. So we have to take these accounts and kind of weed through what's nonsense and what's not, which becomes kind of hard sometimes. Well, you know, they, uh, when they, when you talk, when you're talking about one, when you're talking about going in alone after one of these things, that's your first mistake. <laughs> yeah, you know, no doubt. I mean, if that, that's you the scenario have, I'm going to throw. Don't have, <laughs> you don't have you don't have anything other than you know the mini gun from Predator. You ain't got a prayer, no doubt. Know? And yeah, uh, mini gun is right. Get good old street sweeper. I, uh, I, you know, I've heard, I've heard accounts where you know these these things get these things and and, and Sasquatch more often actually. Get taken down with a, with a thirty out six or, or something like that. Yes, I, yeah, I've, I've heard of them being killed. I've seen photos but, of Sasquatch but, being killed. But I don't think I, I think the the shot placement has a lot to do with it too. Yes, sir. They shoot them where they eat and shoot them where the food goes down. If you're not yeah. aiming for the mouth, the throat, I mean, yeah, you can't play with these things. Um, and, and just say from a defensive standpoint, say you're out there in the middle of the woods barbecuing, you're old school, you don't want to, you know, stay on the beaten trail, you go off the path and all of a sudden you're frying up a rack of ribs and you hear something running through the trees. You're going to be hard pressed to take one of these things down by trying to wound it. Um, it's going to take a marksman, I believe. That's just my opinion. Now, I know the, the account from uh, Coast to Coast about the guys that, that killed the two and in, in down in the big thicket area in Texas. Um, they were out farming hunting and took one down with, I believe it was a 30 out six, may have been a little bit bigger, but, um, and then the other one dragged it off into a, into a, I think it was a plum thicket and, uh, they drew straws on who was going to go in there and, and, you know, go in the thicket. No kidding. And, of course, short straw loses, you know. And this old boy had to go in there, and he went in there, and he had a forty-four on his hip. And it was the female. It was the male they dropped, and the female was in the thicket waiting on him. And she charged him. And he dropped her with a point-blank shot with a forty-four. But, I mean. And, you know, see, I believe the large caliber, the large caliber weapon's the way to go. And I know oh, yeah. a lot of people listening to me are like, D, you, we know for a fact you don't go out with a weapon. I don't whatsoever. And I don't implore people to. If you want to have a benign, peaceful encounter, if you just want to have a sighting, because these things aren't looking for trouble. But that being said, just like people, you have one asshole in the group. Right. You know, somebody who just doesn't care. They just don't like us. They're like, oh, there's one of those humans. I'm going to make an example of them. You know what I mean? Like uh, the the ones you hear, the ones that I think that we that we hear the attacks coming from are you have one that's a rogue that's um, has been kicked out of the family unit, tribe, or whatever, and is trying to you know just trying to survive. And right. or two, you have um. I think there's different mentalities in different tribes. And if you run across a rogue tribe that, you know, is comparative to, you know, um, the headhunters, you know, that we used to be around and, right. and all that kind of stuff. I, I think that exists. 
you know, and I think that's probably where you run into the ones that are causing the trouble. But I'm it's glad, few, I'm glad but you it's said far, that. But it's few and far between. You know, we, we often talk about the, the, you know, the lone gun, the, uh, the single individual that the tribe says, hey, you're too much trouble, you're drawing too much attention, you're done, you're out. Yeah. But I have heard that there's individual tribes, you know, multiple individuals within this tribe who are just like this individual that they would kick out. They hate humans. If they see an opportunity to hurt one of us, they're going to take it. Right. So and I'm going to try to impart whatever knowledge that I've learned in the three years I've been doing this to you guys to keep yourself safe because you're not going to go to uh, a state park and get a pamphlet that's going to explain this stuff to you. All right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm with, I'm in the agreement text. I don't know if you agree or not, but I do believe that these creatures, these animals, because that's what they are. They're creatures yep. Yep. that their hide is a little bit thicker than what most people would think. So yeah, I, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, you know, I mean, to get, to go through this, just to traverse the terrain and stuff they do. I mean, you know, they, they, they have, have yes, sir. They're swimming through bramble bushes in those thickets like they're not even there, like it's water. Yeah. I mean, uh, half the stuff that they go through with relative ease, if we went through it, we're going to need stitches. Plain yeah. I mean, you folks have a lot of researchers in there with you. Brown Dwarf, Cascade, Bigfoot, I think I saw in there. Um, multiple people will say, tell you the same thing. These things can move through thick brush and thorns and thickets like a hot knife through snow. So that's not something with delicate skin. Um, so you ha you have this giant, predatory, upright walking hominid or creature that we refer to as dog man. And I've seen a lot of people talk about the others. I'm going to get into that here in a second. But for me personally, you can again, you can look these up on YouTube. Hollow points aren't all they're cracked up to be. If you have a heavy jacket, that hollow point's going to hit it and it's going to mushroom. You may get some shrapnel from it, but the bullet itself isn't going to lodge into whatever you're shooting it at. Me personally, I go for full metal jacket. Yeah, because you're. I think you're going for penetration more than anything else. Yeah, you're going to want that penetration. Like <laughs> with these hollow points, you're not going to want to miscalculate. If you if you fire at one of these things, you're in. You're in it for. You're in it to win it. You're in a battle. So I'm going to want one shot, one kill, if at all possible. You know, um, these things aren't to be trifled with. That's why I'm, we're not imploring anybody to go out there and actually actively hunt these things. That's stupid. You know yeah. what I mean? But if you put yourself in that position or if you find yourself in that position, we want you safe. Um, Which I don't think you're going to be no matter what you do. Yeah. <laughs> If, that, if that's your attitude, and that's what you go out to do, and you put yourself in that position. Good luck, brother. Yeah, you're gonna reap what you sow. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah they, they, <laughs> leave these things alone, if at all possible. But if you're going out there, old Dion says, full metal jacket. Um, aim for the vitals. Aim for what you would aim for if somebody were to come into your home. Uh, excluding well, the heart. Well, you're you're, but you're basically telling everybody to aim center mass because that's what everybody's trained to do. Um, uh, well, well, yeah, that's true. I'd aim high. I'd, I'd be shooting mouth, eyeballs, you know, something something that's going to hurt it extremely bad, if not kill it. Because I do believe that their breastplate is like, you know, Kevlar. There's way too many encounters where you hear somebody emptying a whole clip center mass and these things brush it off like it's nothing. Um, BDRP, how you doing, my friend? Aim for the nuts if male. Uh, Tony Hill, <laughs> you're not kidding, uh, but I wouldn't stop there. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to make these things mad. They're going to be mad anyways. If you're in there with a the weapon, uh, if you don't believe me, go to your friends, the BFRO and look at some of their encounters that they've documented and notice the similar, there's one similarity with every, what somebody would consider a violent or hostile encounter with Bigfoot. Even let's go back to Bigfoot. You're going to have a hostile encounter with Bigfoot. If you have a weapon. If you're in their territory, if you're on their hunting grounds, if you're around one of their adolescents, you run a good chance of having a hostile encounter if you have a weapon, period. I mean, I, you know me. I'm not going to lie to you people. I have nothing to gain or lose. I'm going to tell you the truth, whatever the cost may be. That's my opinion. Weapons equal hostile encounters, potentially. And I, and I don't think, but you know, we say we're, we're talking about hostile encounters. We're not talking about they're going to jump out and 
rip your head off first rattle out of the box. Yeah. Yeah, well, they yeah, they're going to throw stuff they, at you. Yeah, they don't, they're going to try to run, spook you away. I mean, that, that's, you know, throw, throw the rocks, throw the logs, and, you know, and, you know, when it comes down to it, they're going to bluff charge you. And, you know, it's, they're going to try everything they can to keep from some sort of a know, physical and, confrontation. And, yeah, engaging you. I mean, but you're going to get that, like we were saying, that, you know, lone wolf out there, for lack of a better term. That Yeah, you know, you're going to get that one bully, that one guy who just don't care. You know, he sees you and he sees something that he's going to make an example out of. And he could, you know, I mean, he could have had a bad experience when he was younger, and that could be why he's like he is. You know, somebody shot him, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, somebody shot him. Uh, they can, in my opinion, smell gunpowder and gun oil. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah. So you're going to have to take that into account. Um, from my experiences, just from going out there with one individual and all the way to 13 individuals, they know the sound of your vehicle. They know the smell of the exhaust of your particular vehicle. And they know your smell as you sit in the vehicle driving to that location. They're you're not going to sneak up on them. No, you're not going to. As soon as your foot hits green grass, it's their game. You just yeah. have to maneuver around what they got going for you because um, they're in control. You're coming into their home. It'll be just like uh, if, if Tex or I were to bust in your front door right now. Say you're not home. We All we do is we move every lamp out of the house and put up a purple lamp. You're not going to come home from work, even if we repair the door and say, hey, well, everything's fine. I'm just going to make me a sandwich. No, you're going to see that there's purple lamps all over the place. These things notice the most minute change in their environment that you can think of that's why we can't get them on trail cams in my opinion no i i completely agree they they, you know one i mean they're not the only you know critter out there that can you know even at night you know see the infrared flash and, and everything else and not to right. mention here they hear the cameras go off and and i think sure. if they see you out there and trust me if they're out there putting tra trail cams up in an active area that you know is an active area, you're being watched. And if you don't realize that already, you need to back up and go back to school because <laughs> the, the, you don't, you're not going to walk in, the, you're not going to walk in these, in, in these things house without knocking and then not know about it. You just no, ain't no. going to do it. You know, yeah, and you I don't damn care. Sure ain't going to just walk in without knocking. That's, that's, you know, and that's why you'll never see me go out on the expedition or go out researching or anything else, all camoed up, you know, face painted out because it makes absolutely no sense. That's for, yeah, that's for you, not for them. Right. You know, it makes absolutely no sense. I, you, you go out there and just walk out there and, you know, day glow orange and neon pink. It ain't going to matter if you're in that or 3d camouflage. Yeah, they're going to they're going to we don't know what their depth perception is, but we can guesstimate that it's far beyond anything that we can imagine. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I believe that they can see you through the thick brush from 50 yards away. And I'm I'm not telling you that from a guess. I'm telling you that from three years of experience, the first year, day in, day out, like I was punching the time clock out there. These and things are just phenomenally intelligent when it comes to the just their natural predation for for hunting and stalking if they if they don't see you they damn sure smell you or hear you yeah and a lot of people text a lot of people don't take into account that we have a whole lot more noise pollution than they do oh yeah they're sitting here in a quiet apartment right now stone cold quiet this is probably a marching band of them you know mm -hmm. what i mean like th their senses are just so fine-tuned i mean think about the game that they're stalking through the woods and uh, Brown Dwarf's in there with you, too. He has a bunch of brilliant structures and a lot of impediments that they throw up to kind of navigate the deer the way they want to. Um, Brenton Son, I talked to him about six weeks ago, and he was telling me about this island that's in the middle of a river in Kentucky where he believes, and I'm inclined to agree with him, that they're herding deer, raising them, feeding them, and just taking what they need. I believe that they're intelligent enough to do that, folks. I uh, I think they've got you know a lot of intelligence and and I think you know like like we I've said time and time again you know 
if they're half as intelligent as we as if that we give them credit for, and they've been around people for thousands of years, and you think they didn't pick a little something up, you're nuts. Yeah, and, and see, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I think that the indigenous peoples of America and probably all over the world maybe picked some stuff up from them. And that's very well, uh, that very well may be. I mean, they, they coexisted for thousands of years. Yep. You know, they learned from each other. That's not a stretch. No, you know, we, 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 you know, we hear, you know, the first Americans, you know, talk all the time about coexisting with these creatures and, you know, sometimes even working with them, you know, now I don't know. I mean, yeah, to a certain but, extent, but it's never been just like a symbiotic relationship between man no. and these things. No. And but if we're to believe what the what the rumor is that the dog soldiers of the 17 and 1800s were exactly as it sounds, they were some sort of an upright walking dog man type creature. Now you'll hear in, uh, local Native Americans tell you this. And what's put out there for public consumption is, oh, well, you know, these braves would come in and eat the dogs of their enemies. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like, why would they be so revered and feared throughout history? Why, why would well, we they, have a record of them? Well, they, they paint them as the, the way the way I see them is they paint they paint the dog soldiers um, in with almost the same brush as the Viking berserkers. Right. There's a li- yeah, there's a little bit of like fantasy and fairy tale going on with them, but the berserkers were just big Norwegians. And if you look at uh, Tate and I've had this conversation a lot. If you look at the Norwegian people now, most of the big bodybuilders, the big six foot two, six foot three right. tall, three hundred pound, muscle bound, you know, just monsters, are coming from Norway, and they're in all these competitions. Just imagine that hopped up on dope and mushrooms. That's yeah. the that's the berserker, you know. Yep. They'd have this special food for them to eat and a special elixir for them to drink and send them to the front lines, and they could take, you know, arrows and lose arms and still fight just as hard as if they just rolled out of bed. You know, they're still human beings, folks. So there's something there that that was added to them to make them this invulnerable killing machine. Well, you got this invulnerable killing machine just from nature itself with the dog man. Yeah, and I think if you get if you ever got them into a frenzy, you'd be in a world of hurt. And that and that's the only reason I'm doing the show. I believe it's too it, it's near impossible because you're going to have to go through a lot of Sasquatch, and they're not going to play around with you. They're just not going to let you wander around through uh, their area, armed to the gills, you know, where their children play. Let's call a spade a spade. It's where their children play. Um. <laughs> You, you 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 really can't beat around the bush with it. Um, Julie Davis just threw my my secret nickname in the chat, Beowulf. That's weird. Do I know you, Julie? Anyways, these these Sasquatch, uh, they're not going to play around with you either. We're talking about Dog Man, but it's hard to talk about Dog Man without throwing in the Sasquatch because they're nothing to be. Tr- I, I hear a lot of these Dog Man stories, these creepy encounters. You'll hear these horror narrators talk about them and whatnot. But the fact of the matter is Sasquatch is just as much of a threat, if not more, because there's more of them and they they're pulling military tactics on your ass as soon as you get out of your vehicle. That's how Tex had his first sighting. Um, Mm -hmm. As soon as we get out of the vehicle in my main research area, as I'm explaining to him that we're going to have we're going to (laughs) have we're going to have a century about 25 to 50 yards to our left. And one from about 50 to 75 yards to our right. They're going to move counterclockwise as we go through the area. As I'm explaining this, he's silent. So I'm thinking he's listening. As he's listening, in my mind, he's actually having his first sighting of a Sasquatch. Yeah. (laughs) I I, I said, well, I'll be damned. Look at that. (laughs) So, I mean, and that that to me also, Tex, says that they're not some sort of a supernatural spirit being. They are predictable. And they are vulnerable. Well, you know, if these things, uh, I know I'm going to step on some toes here, but guys, if these things could vanish into portholes, cloak, and all that kind of stuff, why in the world would this thing take off running into the forest? Yeah, how the hell is the 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 somewhat decent writer D. Doss, who likes to go in the woods and see these things, 
how am I predicting with all this accuracy what's going to take place to the point that he's having a sighting? I'm, I'm, I'm no mystic. You know what I mean? I'm no shaman. It's just that I've been out in this area so many times I've learned their tactics and their strategies because they're a physical being that's running the same gambit that they run every time I go out there. I, I mean, will say this. If you have stuff that looks like it's cloaking and disappearing and jumping in portals, it ain't a squatch. You call your local preacher. <laughs> yeah. You, you're dealing with something uh, on a whole new level. And that gets to the others. A lot of times, and, you know, I'm telling you from my personal experience, a lot of times people are mistaking the others for physical Sasquatch, physical dog man. I totally agree. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, folks, but dog man's not showing up in your kitchen. He's not making dishes fly out of your cupboards. He's not knocking your TV remote off your coffee table. That's something completely different. There's other stuff that's out there that occupies the same space as these physical beings for whatever reason. That's a whole nother conversation for another show. But they, for whatever reason, are aping or mocking these physical beings. And I believe that's a part of some sort of deception. Um, we're not talking about that stuff tonight. We're talking about this natural physical being that can be killed. It bleeds, it procreates, it dies. Not easy to kill. Not easy, easy, not easy now, whatsoever. And if you look back, uh, let's let's look back on the floor account. You know, they, they were dropping these things with headshots from 50 caliber muskets. You know, yeah. or I, I'm assuming they were muskets. 1851, I believe it was. It, that's a safe assumption that they so, were, no, you know, it, some sort of black well, powder. It, um, well, it could, they, they were probably using carbines, but, um, Oh, civil war. Yeah. You're probably you know, right. They, I mean, they were, they were, uh, you know, dro dropping them with headshots and you had, you know, the, the, the young kid, you know, he polished one off that was probably very wounded, um, with a knife, you know, right. And, I've talked to a gentleman who we're going to have here in the next couple of weeks who, was picked up and carried off and actually uh, shot one as he, I mean, he just put it up against flesh and pulled the trigger. Uh, he thought it was the head, but it still ran off and stabbed it at the same time. He still has the knife that he stabbed it with, had a uh, DNA on it. And yes, there was a DNA study. I'm hoping to have the gentleman who did the DNA study and the person who pulled that trigger and dug that knife into that being on the show to explain to you what we're talking about right now there. And, and, I reiterate what Tech says. You're not dealing with some sort of a physical being if they're doing supernatural stuff. You're just not. From my experience and just from, I mean, I, I, I for the past two years since I've had this channel, I've explained to you from CERN moving on, like how these physical beings could do this stuff, but more than likely they're not without help. So we have to assume that this physical being is just that it's just a physical, natural creature. Um, there are these other beings out there though, that for, for whatever reason, if you can tell me, I'll give you a million bucks because I've studied it day in, day out for two years. And I don't know for whatever reason, they're occupying the same space and somehow using these things, using these natural creatures. Well, the, the thing is, is, is nobody knows we all have theories, Nobody knows for sure. I don't know that we ever will. No, yeah. I will sooner or later. But well, I, as for anybody I, else, <laughs> I, I don't think we're going to find out. I don't think you get all the answers. And I don't know if you get all of them until, you know, you get somewhere else and then here, you know, but. And, mo and most folks that know me know that uh, the only reason I can, you know, keep a even kill attitude towards this stuff and still pursue it is because I do believe in that coming again, you know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the blood that protects us. Um, I don't believe that anybody should go out there, especially with this other, what they call the others or the other stuff that's going on without having a solid foot and foundation in something besides yourself, because these things, they don't care what your opinion is. They don't care what your religious belief or institution is. Um, you'll take something home with you and they're going to make a lot of trouble for you if you're not careful. Yeah, I agree. And, but you know, like you said, that's another show, but, um, jumping back on killing a dog, man, 
Um, now, supposedly they killed one in LBL. You know, um, supposedly we're not we're not co-signing that, but I believe it. Um, and it took. I mean, this thing was huge, you know, but I, I don't know the specifics on what it, what they used to take it down. And jump over to the giant of Kandahar, you know, um, which is a totally different creature. But what they used to take it down, you know, they they hit it with seven point six two and five five six, and repeatedly in in the face before they took it down. Hitting it in the chest wasn't done it no good. Right, and that's what people call the nephilim. Right. The, ne the Nephilim's not these uh, these beings that we're seeing out here in the woods and that we're studying and researching. The the Nephilim is what they ran into over there in Afghanistan. And if we're, since we're talking about this, I think it's awful funny that George W. Bush starts sawing down mountains with the Patriot missile right around the time that this uh, Giants of Kandahar story started happening. You know, that's that's funny to me, because if you talk to the locals, the giants are coming up from these tunnels underneath these mountains over there in Afghanistan. Right. I digress. Well, <laughs> well that's where they that's where they ran into that giant of Kandahar was <clears throat> at the mouth of a cave. And he had already slaughtered one, you know, one strike team. No doubt. I mean, and and that's what these dog men and Sasquatch will do to anybody. Listen. Kirk Stokes, most of you guys know who that is. He is the, with a capital T-H-E, the dogman researcher of North America. I mean, he's not going in there on the weekends, grilling out, and then walking through the woods about 100 yards. He was spending months at a time in Daniel Boone National Forest. For most of you who don't know, that runs from one part of the state to the, ne to the next. Um, he was going in there for months at a time. Uh, his back looks like a, a, a map of Braille just from the scars from ticks and leeches that got on him. He'll tell you straight up. You can take in a whole Navy SEAL team and one of these dog man creatures or one of these Sasquatch creatures will be able to take them out with relative ease. From what I've seen, just going in by myself, unarmed, then becoming comfortable with me, seeing how they remain elusive as if it's a smudge to their uh, personality or it's a smudge to their honor. If they're seen, I can believe it. These things are way too big, way too strong, and way too elusive and quiet for just, you know, uh, Johnny Hanyak and some boy from Hey Boy Corner to go in there armed to the gills, you know, with a mouthful of uh, a beech nut, thinking that they're going to take one of these things out. It don't work that way. I mean, just like Tech said, you're going to have to have a game plan set in place before you even think about going out there. Yeah, you're going to, you, you would have to have, you're going to have to treat it like an op because that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. I mean, you're taking on something that eh, <laughs> you're taking on something that learned military tactics before there was even a standing military on planet earth. And if you go in there without, you know, a bunch of Johnny come lately's, you know, I mean, with absolutely no training under fire, you're going to, they're going to fall apart when, you know, it hits the fan and chaos will ensue and death will soon after. So. Okay. We, I'm, I'm keeping it on chat. We got something that looks pretty interesting to me. Mary Carter. Hi, this is Andrew Carter. Why don't you give Dr. Johnson's theory a chance and go out there with faith in God and open mind, open heart and a uh, cot and spend the night. Um, Tex can tell you as, as as well as just about everybody in that chat with you right now that that's what I've done since day one. My faith is not in myself. I can I can do nothing alone. My faith is in Lord Jesus Christ who gets me that link to God. And uh, I believe in the Bible. I'm a Bible believer. The Bible says that I have the power to tread over uh, serpents and scorpions and the whims of the enemy cannot harm me. I believe that within my soul. And I've so I've hurt my ankle out there. But besides that, I've got a few tick bites and I got ate up by chiggers one night. Besides that, I cannot validate anything that uh, Dr. Johnson said. I've spoken to him personally. Um, Mr. Carter, spoken to him personally. Great guy. 
Um, what you see in the cockiness and arrogance, I've got nothing of. Uh, he's really he's been really nice to me, but I cannot with any kind of I mean, God would deal with me if I was sit here and lie to you and say that um that I have seen anything that he said he's seen out there. Uh I'm sure you've heard my show before is why you're saying that. Um, and I'll stick to that. I do not believe that what he let the 22,000 souls uh, that he let through that were orbs that turned into something else. I do not believe them to be what we know as Sasquatch or Bigfoot. I'm sorry. The great God, don't get me wrong. I'm not bad mouthing him nor you. And I, I appreciate that comment, but I cannot say from my experience that that is what a Sasquatch is. It's gotten to the point where the female, the alpha female of the tribe walked across the trail the first and only time that I was upset in the area in my mind, she thought she was protecting me. So this physical, I could smell her. I could see her. I could hear her on the ground as she walked. I mean, this is a big mamma jamma, at least eight feet tall, at least five feet wide. And you could feel it in the ground when she was walking, she got behind a tree. She walked right in front of us or strangers, mind you got behind a tree and peered down at this person with red eyes, just because he was denying everything that I was showing him in the area. Uh, this was a physical being. This wasn't an orb that came out of a tree. She came from nowhere, mind you. But like I said, you now, know, this was this was definitely a physical being. Now, now that being said, have we seen things out there that we cannot explain? Yes, I saw things out there that I cannot. I have no explanation for. The last time I was out, and but. Do I think that if I lay down and go to sleep, that Bigfoot's going to stick his hand through my tent wall and read my mind and heal me? No, I do not. Take and I'm sorry. Cancer. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if that steps on anybody's toes. That's just not what I believe. And it's if not even about belief with me. And, and Tex has been out plenty of times with me. This is just from experience, folks. I'm not going to tell you my beliefs because my beliefs sometimes don't coincide with what I've seen. But uh, yeah, it's true. And 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 honestly, I'm, I'm like I said, God would deal with me if I were to tell you guys any kind of a lie. I've not seen any. I've seen what I thought was an orb, but I also wear glasses. Um, one time in the same area I've been going back to and hitting real hard for three years. Um, like I said, you know, Doctor Johnson gets a bad rap just because how he's perceived in the public. The guy's been nothing but polite. He's been nothing but great. And honestly, our political views go head to head. You know, they coincide with one another. But uh, as far as his experience out in the field, I've not had the same experience, nor do I share, share the same opinion of what those experiences are. But moving on from that, <laughs> you know, but uh, like I said, he's a great guy. You know, and hopefully I want to get him on the show, but he says that everything that he has to say is in that book. I don't believe that. Um, I'm a cockeyed optimist, though. You folks know me. I'm going to get him on here and get him to talk to us. Well, I'd uh, like to hear what he happy has birthday, to say. Tate. I mean, it's Tate's birthday. Yeah, it was yesterday, I believe. But happy birthday to my regular co-host, Tater Plays. Happy birthday, brother. I'm not going to sing to you tonight, but happy birthday, sweetheart. <laughs> Man, I've I've missed the hell out of y'all. If you can't tell, Let's see, oh, I'm glad I'm glad to be back in the saddle and doing this stuff again. I I thoroughly enjoy it. We're glad to have you back, man. Let's see. I haven't given everybody a shout out who decided to take the time out of their night and join us live. Uh, Bigfoot Forest, Vancouver Island, which is Miss Lindy, uh, Mr. Robert Childers, Can Squatch who we get to see every now and again. Glad to have you in there. Bigfoot Memphis, Michael Gordon. Big Mike is the reason I have this new mic right now. He said he got tired of me sounding like a scratchy broken record, so he sent me a new <laughs> mic. Thank you, sir. Fear the Great White, uh, Bigfoot Forest, Vancouver Island again, just because I liked it that much. Um, Tater Plays, Lady in the Woods, whose property hopefully I'll be getting to visit um, within the next month. Uh, Miss Julie Davis, who is Susie. Thank you, Susie. He's the one who let my uh, my secret nickname out, <laughs> Beowulf. Uh, B Footer, Sam Squatch Rivera, who's a very very underrated researcher, folks. If you can see those three dots next to his name, check his channel out. He he's in a very very active area. He's got a 
Very, very good head on his shoulders. Great guy. Great heart for this thing. Tater plays, of course. Mario G20. Fear the Great White. Tony Hill. Muscles. What about a dog woman? I'll tell you what. The guy that we were talking about earlier, Kirk Stokes, check his channel out, man. He has a dog woman that he named Lily. Talking to him personally, and I hope I'm not telling tales out of school, but he got so close with the relationship with this being, with this creature. They were playing hide and go seek and throwing stones at each other. Um, and he told he tells me at the very beginning of this that I have the same thing that he has, and I'll be doing the same thing that he does within you know a handful of years. Folks, <laughs> I've been doing this three years, but I don't know. And I've seen the alpha female, which a lot of you guys make fun of me for because that was my first sighting. She was the one that came out when I guess it can be perceived in their minds that I was in danger. But I cannot imagine just playing tag with this big broad. I mean, she's not ugly, but dad gum. When I say <laughs> feet tall, I'm being conservative. Like you could hear her approaching. You know, and that and that brings up another thing. Um, you know, these things, you know, one minute we'll be talking about, you know, they can move silently through the forest like a ninja, and next thing you, you, you hear people talk about, well, I heard, you know, I heard the footfalls. I think that personally that you hear the footfalls because that's, that's I think they're stomping. I think they're, they're showing agitation and trying to, I think it's one of their tactics to, you know, to, to absolutely. I know it, it, it. They got my attention that night. I was up there. <laughs> Tex, you want to tell them a little bit? Okay, folks. Uh, I know a lot of you were on the uh, the last show with us. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting Mr. Tim Kumbo Baker here recently, and also who's become my brother in the faith, Chuck uh, from Oklahoma, chasing the beast. Check out their channel. They're a whole lot more professional than me, of course. But uh, old Chuck, man, he, this guy, he's, he's just an, he's an adventurer. He's Indiana Jones. Uh, he came down to my area. He brought about 13 like-minded people with him. And I tell you, hands down, it was the most exciting experience I've ever had in Brown Springs. Hands down. It was activity from daylight to, to from daylight to daylight, all night long, all day long. There was something to see. Uh, here. here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just completely definitive. There was no, oh, well, this could be this or this could be that. It was them. And for whatever reason, we had enough people out there. We, we, me personally, I don't want to lead any kind of expedition because I said, you know, the more people you have out there, the less likely you're going to have any kind of activity. That wasn't the case whatsoever. Um, for any of you active researchers who go out there, try playing Pink Floyd's Animals. Just give it a try. <laughs> Uh, you'll piss something off. Yeah, you'll you'll either piss something off if you turn it off, or they either like it or they hate it. I'll put it that way. I don't know. I don't. I can't figure out which one they which, which one it is, but yeah, it definitely gets their attention one way or the other. We were out there, and um, it, it was Chuck and his crew from the Oklahoma Finding Bigfoot, and the forgive me if I get this wrong, but the Southern Bigfoot Alliance, that group, um. We had three three groups together, which is you know monumental. We have three groups together down there in Brown Springs. Uh, Mr. Glass, which that's his real name, Mr. Glass, and a gentleman who is a traveler and adventurer himself from help me Denmark. Out, Denmark. Denmark. Anders. Anders. Mr. Anders from Denmark. Big shout out, Anders. This guy, he's another one with ten tons of courage in him. He doesn't know anything about this stuff. He's just travel. He went from. Uh, New Hampshire, coast coast. or yeah, he went from coast to coast on a bicycle, folks. This guy's great. Uh, we took him into the cemetery there at Brown Springs. We got growled at. This is after yeah, we got up there three times in one night, <laughs> being ran off twice and going back three times. But uh, this kid went in, he had the heart for it. Anyways, flat, f fast forward a little bit. We went to my main research area, and Mr. Glass has the mystery van. He's got these disco lights going. He opened the doors, got the disco lights going, and he played Pink Floyd Animals. We went through the whole album probably twice. And I don't know what caused us to stop it. Um, well, well, what happened was, because see, you the way we were seated is it was me, you, Anders, and Glass. Yes, sir. And me and me and Glass heard the first one. We were the two main ones that heard it. Y'all, 
Y'all didn't get a. I mean, y'all heard it, but you didn't get. I didn't. You didn't. Yeah, get I, it I like didn't we, react. I knew better. Yeah, you didn't get it like we got it. I mean, this this screen stopped me cold, and I had chills right down my spine as soon as it happened. Glass jumped out of his chair when he heard it, you know, and looked at me, and I was like, "Yeah, I heard that too." And he goes, "Yeah," and he went over and we t- and turned the music down. That's why we stopped. It. Yeah, and then. Yeah. About 20 minutes later is when the second one hit and it had changed locations. And I mean, it sounded like a banshee. That was the most blood curdling, god awful scream I've ever heard. And I've it, never it, heard it, anything it, like that. There was, it was no human being. I no, mean, that was like it. a damsel in distress in an Alfred Hitchcock movie on steroids. She, it, she, him, whatever it was, has it was, the, it was definitely a she. Has the title of Screen Queen hands down. There is no doubt about it. But I get chills just sitting here thinking about it, and it was, it was amazing. I mean, it really was. But and that was the first real kind of experiment we've ever done in that area. Right. Usually we just kind of you know slowly kind of trait through. I mean, y'all, you did the bacon that one time, but that was, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's but, the Bigfoot cat. But as far as, as, far as the, the music and lights, and because I had my reservations about it. I really did. You know, I, I knew they were going to do something because they've. I don't believe in the thousands, maybe hundreds or whatever years they've been down there that they've ever seen a bunch of disco lights and heard Pink Floyd coming out of a van. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the, yeah, yeah, I can understand that because I hey, I'd never seen it until then myself. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, me neither. But I definitely, uh, I definitely tried again because it did elicit a response, a definitive response. And before I forget, and I keep wanting to do this, I want to throw a shout out to Mr. Glass. That man's hospitality was unbelievable. Um, it was absolutely unbelievable, Mr. Glass, Mr. Glass, Larry, Gary. Um, just about everybody who showed up with Chuck from Oklahoma chasing the beast, Oklahoma Bigfoot chasing the beast on Facebook. It's just Oklahoma chasing the beast. I believe on Facebook, it's Oklahoma Bigfoot chasing the beast, but those guys, their, their, their hospitality, Barry is another one. He He's about six foot three, not our Barry, not the BDRP Barry, but the Oklahoma, uh, chasing the beast, Barry, he's about six foot three. And he had this, uh, GoPro on his hat the entire time. He got some magnificent footage. And that's still pouring in right now. As soon as I get it, I'm going to put together a little package for you guys so you can be there with us because that's another important part to me that I've kind of uh, been slacking on. I want to put you in the field with us. That's part of the fun of it. But, uh, guys, I had a blast. And and it was so fun on both sides of the fence that we're making it an annual August outing. I would much prefer... October, but okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, they were out there and they were active, so yes, they were. Yes, they were. You know, we kind of danced to their tune sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I tell you, it's you know, and the stuff I had happen to me on on the solo trip was phenomenal. You know, yeah. and you know. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but he's been saying since I've met him that he wants to go in there by himself. And I want to piece it together for you guys because you can hear it before the trip, during the trip and after the trip. He got the audio of the whole thing. Um, and it's phenomenal. It, it's almost like listening to a like a radio serial. Um, I, I think you guys are going to enjoy it thoroughly. And my hat's off to you, bro. I laugh, but I damn sure wouldn't be going to that cemetery at, by myself during the day, you know what I mean? Like, but, uh, that night we were, we were all prayed up and paid up, you know? And honestly, even though it was a night trip, like I said, a lot of you guys are old schoolers been there as long as I have on this channel. I said, I'd never go out at night, but that was the funnest time I've ever had. And that was in the middle of the night. Most nights you know? we had uh, just about every textbook experience you can have. We had it. Yes. Sir. I heard, I mean, we started out when I started out the night, you know, I heard there were footfalls around me. I, I heard, you know, the, I heard whoops. I heard, you know, growls, and, and I saw eye shine and and tree break. And it, 
then the screams and then the growl again. And then, I mean, it's just it goes on and on and on. And you couldn't beat it if you had six arms and eight sticks. No, I mean, you know, know, the only thing, the only, I mean, short of a full blown sighting, I had everything in the world happen to me. And yeah. so you have to leave early. Yeah. I mean, you know, this was a five day thing uh, or was it a four and a half day thing? Right. Um, I, th they allowed me to approach a nest with an adolescent inside and we got it on, uh, on, on, um, what would you call it? Text, not heat, was um, infrared, FLIR? infrared, not infrared, but FLIR. We got it on FLIR. Um, which tomato, tomato, uh, did you get on night vision or did you get it on FLIR? We got it on FLIR. Okay. That's infrared. That's infrared. There you go. Uh, because it was during the day, they somehow found a giant nest and there was an adolescent inside. And, you know, as they approached the nest that they, they heard a bunch of movement coming in from, which would be, uh, from the North out of the woods. And they called me up and they allowed me to approach this nest with this adolescent inside. And folks, we are all, we, we almost hit our live record. There's a hundred listening live right now on a random show that was started at 11 15. Uh, That's thank awesome. you guys very much. I'll miss you too. We got about 10 minutes left. So, uh, we got about 10 minutes left. Do you guys have any questions for Tex or myself? And we have a whole, I've, I've been working this entire time. I don't want you to think I've been slacking off. I have a whole lot more in store for you guys. I've got a lot of produced stuff. Uh, the beast of the field where I've gone through the good book and actually found that when they say beast in the Bible, that most of you old school Christians who study the Bible know that in Hebrew beast can be translated six different ways. Um, there's one translation that I think you guys will find very, very interesting. And to me being a Bible believer and an old school Christian kind of puts it to bed that these things like Texas aren't jumping in and out of portals. They're, they're just not. Um, something that may appear to be them or look like them is, but nah. Okay. Ever get any mind speak phenomenon? Bigfoot four as Vancouver Island says, uh, Lindy, I'm not going to lie to you. I have actually spoke to these things verbally and in my mind and they have reacted when I spoke to them verbally, but the only thing reacting when I speak in my mind is me saying d you're an idiot what are you doing they're not listening they can't hear that <laughs> yeah i've never had anything like that happen to me the only the only thing that i've had happen to me that was is there's when, a sigh <laughs> well it's when i when we was up there in the cemetery and i got sick oh uh we talked about that on one show yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't believe in infrasound, but I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. It was something. I don't know what it was. I mean, we okay. Were... Okay. Here, here, let me set it up for him. We go through the cemetery. This is text third time through there at night. Yep. Um, uh Oh, there's wood booger farm. Ladies and gentlemen, you got my tag team partner of the Bigfoot community. Mr. Wood booger farm in there. Mr. Number one money, money, wood booger farm. Anyways, we go through there and we see this. All, and I've never noticed this. I've been in there with text probably four times. I think maybe once on my own. But it's that old school Native American symbol or, or landmarking where they bend an arm up on one of the uh, stems on a tree. It's like an L shape. And there's a knot right under the L. Well, in front of that, it looked like a burnt piece of log. Maybe a log that been you know, a tree that was hit by lightning or something, right, Tex? Yeah. But I mean, it's parallel with this tree. Well, we got growled at as soon as we got to that tree. Or well, I, I, let me correct myself. Tex got growled at. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put it on. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on you. You got growled at right when we hit this tree. And you know, I say, hey, that was a growl. We stand there for a minute, you know, kind of take in the atmosphere and whatnot, and we press forward. We go past that tree. Well, we only get a few feet before I look back and Tex is as white as a sheet. You know what I mean? He's he's doubled over. And this is something I've never heard in the over a year, right at a year that I've known this man. He says, dude, I think I'm going to have to turn back. Something's wrong. 
that's when I got worried because if something was wrong, we, I wouldn't know about it until it was time to leave. That's the kind of guy Tex is. He's that tough. And I'm not blowing smoke up his chimney. That's just him. So when I saw how he looked and how he was doubled over, you know, I got kind of worried. So we pressed forward a little bit and give it about 10 minutes. I look back and he's just fine. Like nothing ever happened. He goes from white as a sheet to, you know, as if it never even happened. So uh, that's the only time I can say that I've encountered what people refer to as an infrasound incident. I still don't believe that it's infrasound. But what I mean, what can I say? Like, I, I can't lie to you folks. That's what it was like. We hit that knot on that tree and that bend in it, which I mean, it was an unnatural. When I say a bend, it was bent at an L shape. It was it was made to grow right like angle. I mean, yeah, right was, angle. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I can't I can't explain. I can't explain what happened. I really can't because the feeling came over me so fast and left just as fast. It was like turning on a light switch. It was weird. And I've I mean, never had that turn on a light switch. It, it wasn't just, you know, he wasn't just trying to scare me or anything. His face turned white. He started sweating profusely. Uh, he was leaned up against the tree. And 10 minutes after that, he was like pushing us out of the way so he could, <laughs> so he could jump up forward again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like jump in front of us. So it, it was really strange. I mean, I don't, I know a lot of people that are telling me that I got, you know, I got hit by infrasound. And, and I'm not saying it's not possible. It is. I mean, there's a lot of animals that use it. I don't see why these creatures couldn't. But see, the way, the, the way animals use it isn't how these creatures use it. That's my only problem with it. Like well, it, when it, a lion or a tiger uses infrasound, it's a guttural, deep type of, 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 of sound that they're hitting. You know what I mean? And it's fear that stops that rabbit or whatever their game is, that fawn in its tracks. It's not, you know, they're hitting a certain frequency, sure, but it doesn't make their organs vibrate. You know what I mean? I've not seen anything to that effect. But, I mean, it has been studied and it does happen. It happens, but it doesn't happen the same way that this stuff's happening with these creatures. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, and then, you know, that's a topic for debate, too. We can have a whole show over that because, you know, I know there's a lot of y'all listening right now that agree with me that there is no such thing as infrasound with these dogmen and Bigfoot. But um, there are some that say that's exactly what lions and even elephants and um, even fox emit. Well, I don't agree I with mean, that. Well, and, that, you know, that's one thing when. I get to talk to Kumba. I want to ask him about because I mean I've had this personal experience and and he's dealt with it, you know. And he, he, he's actually he's yeah. actually studied it. And done From my talk with him, it. like he can explain it in a way that makes it sound tangible, right? But still, I still have my re reservations. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I, I don't think it's necessarily. Well, you know me, me being a spiritual Christian, I think it's something with I think it's something with the spirit. Um, I think that it, it only happened when we were over there in that cemetery. Um, I honestly think it's something that has to do with that. Uh, Chuck Hunter just put it in there. That tree was a marker. Um, right. Because why didn't it happen to anybody else? You were literally surrounded by people. We heard a growl and literally two minutes later is when you started feeling the effects. Now, we can say that it, the effects were felt after the fact, but still, how did it not affect anybody else? Uh, uh, Julie Davis, just like she says, uh, electromagnetic wave frequencies. Those can be th those can actually pinpoint people. You know what I mean? They can actually bend around someone to target an individual. Well, but the thing about it is, I mean, frequencies act as kind of the same way. I mean, the frequency that bothers me may not bother y'all. You know, it, it don't mean I was targeted. You know, it just means that, you know, they sent that out and I was the unlucky one that, you know, the harmonics was right and it, you know, jailed my innards. I don't know. Speaking of that, Brother Timothy, uh, Timothy Beloved, one of our field researchers, our Illinois field researcher, uh, say a prayer for him and also say a prayer for a buddy of mine named Mike, who's up in Oklahoma. Uh, he had a small seizure today. He's a carpenter and he was actually found after the fact of the seizure. And he was he had to be metaflighted to uh, Texas to a specialist. So all my prayer warriors say a prayer for him, if you would, for me. But um, 
my brother Timothy Beloved, who's over in China right now, believe it or not, he pointed something out to me when he saw our new field researcher, Darren, from Sasquatch Truth. Outstanding, outstanding researcher, folks. Check that channel out, uh, Sasquatch Truth. You won't be disappointed. Anytime he turned on the camera and the deep brush, he's getting something. Um, he pointed out when he saw Darren's footage of because Darren went to Brown Springs with the suit. First time we've met in person. I've known him since I've opened the channel, you know, just researchers courtesy and whatnot. Um, and I believe what you say, Mary Carter or Mr. Carter, actually, that electricity is involved in this phenomena uh, more so than I think a lot of people give credit for, to. But uh, anyways, he pointed out that I have a certain sound in my voice. I, it can be loud without me try, trying to make it loud. I just have a unique, deep voice. And he said maybe that I'm hitting, maybe I'm hitting a certain frequency. I, I may be hitting some frequency that they, they find pleasant. It is why that I've been able to go in there by myself for this entire time. And they had some affi affinity for me because I believe like Nikola Tesla said, um, frequencies, um, and don't let me misquote the great Nikola Tesla. Well, I'll just leave it at that. The frequency is an important part of these things. Uh, these creatures, the dog, man, the Bigfoot and other cryptids that we probably never even saw before, because there are cryptids that I've seen that people have sent me emails of folks that they've sworn me to secrecy. They said, don't show it to anybody, but they didn't say, don't tell anyone. That's why I'm telling you there are cryptids out there physical beings they're not these ethereal weird type of ghostly type figures and ethereal beings they're physical creatures that i i can even begin to describe to you they look like deer with fangs some of them it's weird and there's this crazy elevation in people seeing this stuff crazy elevation but i mean you know it's a sign of the times if you ask me but i digress um just know just know where to place your faith um you, you're not gonna get through it on your own I can guarantee you that. But aside from that, there, I do believe that frequencies play a dire part in this thing. Going back to the title of this show, The Killing Dog Man. There's this show out that talks about these government agents showing up. They use a projected sound device. Tex, I know you've heard this before, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's necessarily a bunch of hooey. No, I think, I think they, they, yeah. they they use it in combat. They yes, use they it. Do. They use it in a um, hostage situation. So they used it in Waco. Yeah, they did. Know? And think about how long Waco was, folks. We just hit a record for our live show audience. We we are at a uh, one hundred and nine uh, people watching live. That's a record for the Bigfoot Dogman Research Project. Awesome. Thank you all very very much. Y'all are outstanding. But yeah, the Waco, look, look how long Waco was. What was that 94, 93? Yeah. I mean, think about how how much that's grown by leaps and bounds. 95, I believe. 95. Well, even still, I mean, uh, we're 2018. Approach, quickly approaching 2019. Imagine how finite that equipment is right now. Oh, how, yeah. Uh, how intricate it is, you know, how, the, the, the advancements that we've had in it. I do believe that frequencies, just like they use it on us, we could probably use it on them. No, there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, you know, you, there's a, and I know Kumbo's talked about it before, called the brown sound, you know, and uh, it's a frequency that, that um, supposedly you can hit and make somebody mess their drawers. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, he told me about that. And he's also, you know, it's been on one of the older episodes of the outlaw. Right. Right. But uh, folks, we want to thank you profusely for joining us on this random show. Uh, I'm going to be doing a whole lot more live shows because I've missed you guys. Um, we're back in the saddle. Like Tex said, Tex is back with us. Thank you, Tex. We've missed the hell out of you. Um, Appreciate we got it. Nine watching live. We got a new record for our live audience. Uh, I'm very, very well blessed to have each and every last one of you guys pushing me forward like you always have since the very beginning. Um, please don't go out there 
and get caught trying to shoot one of these things and say, oh, well, D. Dawson Tech said that if you do this, this, and this, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't put that evil on us. You know, we're, well, we're just kind of, you know, John with you. But like, like Tech said, no boy from Hey Boy Corners is going to go out there with granddaddy's shotgun and get it done. If you find yourself in a position where one of these things is going to harm you, you look as harmless and as benign and as non-threatening as possible. Only even if you're bluff charged. And I know this is a hard thing to say for me, and I know it's going to be a hard thing to hear. But more than likely, if they're charging at you, they're not going to harm you. They want to scare you out of the air. They, they want to scare you out of the area. So keep, just keep that in mind, folks. And um, stay safe out there, please. Just the best thing to do is just walk away calmly. Walk away calmly and keep your head about yourself. Yep. Which is easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, which is a whole lot easier said than done. Well, I'm about to turn into a pumpkin there, Bubba. All right, folks. Again, thank you. God bless y'all. Um, this is the Bigfoot Dogman Research Project for Tex. This is DDoS. You guys have a good night and good night and stay safe out there.